Hello everyone. So I welcome you to the lecture series on quantum computing. And today our topic is the power of quantum computation and BQP. And I know that you have already attended the last lectures on this quantum computation. If you have not already gone through them, then you'll find a link in the description box below. Go through it. Believe me, it will help you to understand the topics in much better way. So let's start today's class. So in this lecture, as I have said that we are going to discuss about the computation power of quantum computing and a complexity point of view, that is PQP. Now, you know, a problem that may take classical computer thousands of years to solve, that type of complex problem we can solve with the help of quantum computers in just few milliseconds or at max seconds. And the reason is what, you know, in the last lecture, we have discussed the concept of superposition that makes or that actually brings that extent of parallelism to quantum computation, which makes this possible that a highly complex problems to be solved within seconds. Then problems from, you know, data encryption to inventing new drugs uh, to creating more precise climate model. This type of problems with the help of quantum computers, we can actually solve and design optimistic model within a very short period of time for which if you use the classical computer that may take a, obviously a longer duration, right? And the reason behind this is of course what you know, three concepts related to our quantum computation. The first one is superposition. The second is entanglement. And the third is interference. Don't worry, for this moment now, you have already know what is superposition, right? And believe me, if you got what is superposition, then you already know the parallelism power of quantum computation and about entanglement and interference in the coming lectures i will discuss them in details up to now you just had to have to know the reason behind this power of quantum competition as because of these three important concepts that or you can say pieces of quantum computing okay superposition entanglement and interference now let's come to the complexity analysis of quantum computation you will get a term bqp which represents to quantum computation now what is this bqp in computational complexity theory bqp that is bounded error quantum polynomial time remember bounded error quantum polynomial time is the class of decision problems solvable by quantum computers in polynomial time and with an error probability of at most one by t for all instances. Okay, and you know, this is analogous to what? BPP, that is, it is the quantum analog to the complexity class BPP. Well, don't worry. I'll discuss about BPP also, but up to now, as I have said, you should know what is this bounded error quantum polynomial time. So bounded error quantum polynomial time is the class of decision problems that can be solved by quantum computer in polynomial time. And if you are already aware with this polynomial, non-polynomial P and P class, you already got it that what does it mean by polynomial time solvable? And there is a minimum error probability and that is at most one by T for every instance. So that is BQP, the complexity related to quantum computation. Okay. 
Now, as I have said that I'll recall the, about BPP because just now I have referred this BQP as a quantum analog to BPP. So let's discuss about this BPP. In computational complexity theory, bounded error probabilistic polynomial trying. This is the class of decision problems solvable by a probabilistic Turing machine in polynomial time with an error probability bounded away from one by T for all inches. See, this is just analog to BQP, right? Yes or no? Because in BQP, what is that? In BQP, this, those class of problems, decision problems, that can be solved in polynomial time with an error probability of at most one by T for all instance, right? So similarly in BPP, these are those class of problems which can be solvable by a probabilistic Turing machine in polynomial time. Remember they are solvable in polynomial time and maximum error probability is one by T for all the instances. So I hope that BPP is now clear to you. Now, BPP is one of the largest practical classes of problems, meaning most problems of interest in BPP have efficient probabilistic algorithm and that we can run quickly on our real modern machines. So what I mean to say that most of our current day problems that belongs to this BPP. And you know, BPP also contains P, that is the class of problems which can be solvable in polynomial time with a deterministic machine. And about this deterministic machines, you know that deterministic machine or deterministic machine is nothing but a special case of probabilistic machine. Okay. Now, we can summarize that if a problem is in BPP, then there is an algorithm for it that has few properties. The first one is that it is allowed to flip coins and make random decisions. Okay, so random decisions is possible with respect to BPP. Then second, the most part, that the important part that is B, that is P, and what is that? It is guaranteed to run in polynomial time. Very important feature. And third, on any given run of the algorithm, it has a probability of at most one by T of giving the wrong answer, whether the answer is yes or no. You know, maximum error probability, as I have said that, that is one by T. So if we run the algorithm, it has a probability of at most one by T of giving wrong answer. So now, up to now, I hope that this BPP concept is clear to you. So we can say that a decision problem is a member of BQP if there exists a quantum algorithm. Obviously, by the term quantum algorithm, I mean to say that algorithm which runs on a quantum computer and that algorithm solves the decision problem with a high probability and is guaranteed to run in polynomial time. So there is a guarantee that that algorithm is possible to run in polynomial time. And if the er error probability is one by T, then what is the probability of giving the correct answer? Obviously one minus one by T, and that is what? 2 by t, yes or no? So I can say that a run of the algorithm will correctly solve the decision problems in what probability of at least 2 by t. So the probability of getting correct answer will be at least 2 by t, not at most, because this is the at least. Since 1 by t is the at most probability of getting wrong answer, so obviously the reverse case is what? The probability of getting correct answer will be at least two by T. Yes, so I hope this is clear to you. Now, if we go for a pictorial representation, then guys do take a screenshot of this diagram. It, it actually de depicting this case. 
you know about p space this this p space than n p okay non polynomial than polynomial so look at this circle okay that is actually what we try to mean by bqp now as a home assignment i would like to give you the question that from this picture or from this diagram try to analyze actually what we what portion we try to mean for pqp and this is very easy you know about if you know about this venn diagram and an intersection portion you can clearly see that above p what we have this pqp okay let me give you the answer directly if it is a bqp obviously what is actually it including is p so there is a guarantee that if the problem is in bqp solvable that obviously that can be solvable with a guarantee in polynomial time right and after that if it is colliding with np that is a different case but p is a guarantee here right so that's it now i think i don't need to introduce this term again p means solve in pol polynomial time and p means verified in polynomial time p space means solve in polynomial space and up to now we have no idea that whether p is equal to np or p is not equal to np and p space is bigger than np these things i hope you know already if you don't know then i am reminding it again so do know them okay and if i am going to give you an example of np complete problem then graph isomorphism is a famous example for the same yes so guys today i have tried my best to discuss the computational power of quantum computers in terms of these three terms that is superposition entanglement interference and with the help of complexity analysis with respect to bqp and there we have also studied bpp and after that we try to discuss their relations through this beautiful Venn diagram. So, guys, wait. Let me give you the questions for today's lecture. And today's question is that you have to answer the comment. First question is state what is BQP in reference to quantum computing. Then, second question is state true or false. Integer factorization is a NP complete problem. So, you need to say true or false. So that's all for today. And I hope you will uh, answer the questions if you have got whatever the topics that I have discussed in today's lecture. And with this Dr. Deepo is signing out with a promise to meet you in the next lecture. And that is also very soon. Thank you. Thank you.